Boards and booze, booze and boards, drink some beers, fight some hordes, drank too much, forgot our swords, ran back home, filled our gourds, got drunk again, sang some chords, boards and booze, booze and boards, with Mickey and Jeb. Welcome to Sunnydale. Sunnydale, California? No. Sunnydale, the home of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ooh, I hope Faith is here. <laughs> Well, I get to play Faith. It's my uh, game. Then I will be Buffy uh, because I like whatever. both of them. Yeah, so, so do I. But uh, <laughs> Jeb and I both like Faith best. So, anyways, this is a legendary Buffy the Vampire f version. Um, we have not been able to review Legendary yet. Hmm. It is a established game. Uh, started with the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. And they've expanded... Uh, they have expansions for that, and then they have some games that are more like offshoots they slash like standalone. There's an Aliens, Aliens one and stuff like that. Firefly, I think. Um, so this is this is Buffy. Um, we are going to review this one, and then hopefully you'll know enough mechanics where if you want to play any of the other ones, you'll have at least the main mechanics. They act. They throw in some stuff. That is a little bit different mechanic-wise, uh, but anyways, um, Jeb and I are big Buffy fans. Uh, we were excited when this came out, and so we're going to use this opportunity to show you the legendary system from Upper Deck. This is a this one says a one to five player, so you can play it solo, thirty to sixty minutes, and it gives an age of fourteen plus. Uh, I'm going to say you can probably go a little... I mean, a lot of these deck-building games, yeah. if the person can read and they have an intention span and they like this kind of stuff, then they can play it. Um, sometimes I feel like they probably crank it up for thematic reasons rather than actual being right. able to being able to play. Uh, so we're super excited to try this out um, as of... Right now, us talking, we have not even um, read the rules yet. We're just excited that there's a legendary uh, yep. with uh, with Buffy, so we're hoping that is as good as... Um, we're hoping we like it as much as we like the show. That's a, weather, <laughs> that's a better way to put it. Uh, so, so anyways, that being said, we will get into uh, our normal components first, then we will teach you how to gameplay, and then we will play a game. And then we'll come back and give a review. Yep. And uh, this one you're not even going to get a sneak preview if it's good or not, because neither of us have even touched it yet. Well, I haven't even played a legendary game before. Oh, well, <laughs> I have. So, I mean, I probably, if there, that's, that's a teeny clue, at least the system is solid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll be back in a minute with yep. that stuff. All right, we're back with components of uh, Buffy. Pretty much other than the mat, you're going to see a lot of cards because guess what? It's a card game. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's, <laughs> no, pretty, much, that, that, that's, that's... pretty much how this goes. Um, and then during, uh, during setup, we'll explain a little bit more. So this will be pretty fast, and we're just going to jump right into setup right after this. So anyways. I guess the first thing is the play mat, which right. um, yep. so, holds everything. Play mat. Um, uh, really like the play mat. The uh, original Legendary has a board. Not that I don't like the board either, but it is kind of nice to have. Um, if if you've used a play mat, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's nice that it rolls up, other than it curls a little bit. Um, but the the nice thing about play mats is like when stuff gets, especially in here where it's only one card, very easy because there's just a little bit of give to pick up your card yep. or just slide it off, whichever way you want to say it. But it does make it nice um, that it's just a little aside. So, anyways, take it away, Jeb. All right, so on I guess on the play mat you have all the different areas. It's actually really nicely labeled. They have yep. names for all all the different spots, so uh, I don't think we really need to go into that. You guys can read. Right. <laughs> so, Plus, you're going to see what what goes in the spots in just a minute. Right. So, I think we can move on to the cards. So, I think the first thing we should talk about are since it's a deck builder, there's always the cards that you start with. So in this game, there are two cards that go into your starting deck. 
Yep. And they are what? The Watchers? So you get Watchers, which is got Giles on the front. And then you have the uh, Initiative Soldiers, which they actually came in a little bit later in the... I was going to say, this, I don't this, remember them that In well. the series when that um, military guy, I forget his name, came into play. Mm -hmm. But that's what they chose to use for this. And it actually kind of makes sense because then they were running around, you know helping kill things or whatever uh, anyways those are the two things that are you're gonna build uh, you're going to start the deck building process with so you've got again the Giles and the initiative soldiers and one of the things that you can initially buy is the potential slayers <coughs> and those are always available like yep. most deck builders so there's... always available potential slayers like Jeb said um, Always available to buy until the deck runs out anyways. Yeah. Alright. And then we have just one example of the cards that you can buy from. Uh, we've got Faith. Right. So, this is, a, this is an example of a hero stack. There's a whole stack of them. They all have, they all have different things, but you're going to um, do a combination of different heroes. We'll get into it in a minute. But that's what the, the cards look like and, um, you know, actually faces uh, Jeb, one of Jeb and I's favorite characters. <laughs> so you get an example of her. Not that we don't like Buffy. Then I guess real quick we can talk about wounds and bystanders because those are kind of yep. extra cards that can somehow either be acquired yep. into your deck or you, you receive them. Right. So. so here's the wounds as the title uh, indicates uh, usually a, a bad thing although some heroes can actually work with them well but usually they're a hand clogger yeah and here's the bystanders that uh, Jeb was talking about and they are basically uh, representative of the innocence people or whatever you want to call them in <clears throat> Sunnydale that can either be rescued or saved or however you want to say it. Yep, and they have effects that can either help or hinder you, I guess. Oh. Or, well, not really super hinder, but whatever. Right. So it, all that leaves us now is the, the bad, stuff. bad stuff. So when you're playing Buffy, there's always, when you set up the, the game, you're going to pick one of the, what is it, big bads? Yep. To be the, uh, the enemy for it, so... Yep. There are the big bad cards for whoever you pick. So, it is an example of the big bad. This is the first. So, the big bad comes with one main card that has reference that you'll use throughout the game. And then four s subsequent cards that are basically going to um, go underneath it, so to speak. Um, and you'll see that a, a little bit more in a minute and we'll explain in detail how that works. But... They come as a set, so when you select your big bad, you take all of these cards. And then there are the, what are they called, villains? Yeah, I so guess. Two, uh, two different types of villains, all right? So here's an example, and it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard uh, to tell the difference. But anyways, so this is a villain, because it says villain, and then it gives you a, like this one is called the first avatar. Um, and then it says villain, and then it, again it, it, it says the first minions, which, you know, uh, makes a uh, difference in terms of wording. And then you have what are called henchmen villain, and it says right under here, henchmen. And this one is uh, Turok, Turok Hand Vampires. So, the villain deck is going to be made up of a combination of, of both of those. Uh, plus a few other cards, but these are the main cards that are going to make up the bad guy deck. And then there is also going to be a scheme right. that uh, it's kind of like an overall thing that gives information on what the bad guy does. And... Right. So that's an example of the scheme cards. Okay, they're all a different scheme. So they basically make they make a scenario for what you're playing, yeah. or or they make a you know a theme or whatever. So you get you can uh, you randomly pick one of these, and this is kind of tells you like some of the bad things that can happen, and also what happens when certain cards are drawn out of the bad guy deck. Uh, so there are uh, this is one of the things that keeps the game uh, fresh and random and everything. 
And then there are the Master Strike and Scheme Twist cards. Right. So that's these two. These are going to be, uh, depending on how many players and such and whatever the scheme tells you, will we'll determine how many of the each of these goes into the bad guy deck. And then again, like I was saying, either the, uh, the scheme will tell you what happens when a scheme twist is drawn and the big bad card tells you what happens when a master strike is drawn. So, um, and sometimes the scheme will even uh, tell you um, to refer to the master uh, or the big bad card sometimes too. So, you know, nothing good's happening here. And then lastly are just the uh, tokens, right? Yeah. There's only two kinds of tokens, and yep. one of them consists of just... So you have your stakes, which are courage. They're courage tokens. <laughs> I drew a blank there for a second. So these are courage tokens. And then the only other token is a, a tracker for the light and dark side of the game board. Yep. And this can move up and down, obviously, and then different cards with different effects will trigger based on if it's light or dark. Yep. So there you go. Uh, pretty quick, pretty simple, because it's all cards. Um, so now we'll get into uh, game setup and a little bit on, on uh, a, a little more detail on the cards and then a lot of detail on as we go into gameplay. Alright, so next up is the setup of the game, which we'll go over. So the first thing you're going to do is give each player their own personal 12 card deck, which is made up of 8 Watchers and 4 Initiative Soldiers. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I'm short one. <laughs> there you go. 8. 8 Watchers, or Giles. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Four initiative soldiers, and you give each player that's playing one of those stacks, yep. and that's pretty simple. easy yeah. enough. And then that would, uh, yeah. you know, go in front of them or whatever. And then next up, you give each player one courage token, and the rest of the courage tokens are placed in a pool on the side. Okay. So, so courage tokens, as indicated, are the the stakes. So each person would get one, so we'll toss one over there. The rest go over where it says courage over here. However, just as an aside, yeah. some of, or uh, at least one of, because Jeb and I have played this multiple times now, will limit how many courage tokens you get in the game. So in that case, you would just count how many it said and put those in the pile there and uh, hopefully you get to <laughs> don't lose them all. All right, next you will place the darkness counter on the one dark space of the darkness track. Well, so the game's really nice and doesn't even <laughs> start start you in the light, starts you in the dark. Um, and again, I know I've already said it, but this tracker obviously is going to move up and down, and certain things trigger in the dark, and certain things trigger in the light. And then you are going to place some certain stacks in their, their spots, so the potential slayers, the wounds, and the bystanders are all just going to be placed on the board. Okay. Now, this is only a couple potential slayers. There's a whole stack of them, but that's where they go. You're going to grab all the wounds. There's a nice big stack of those, too. That's only a fraction of the wounds. And um, what was the last thing? Bystanders. What did I do? Yeah, okay. And then the bystanders, again, a much bigger stack. But they go there. Uh, these 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 are always out during the game. Sorry, these go upside down. Yep, you that's what Jeb was getting ready to say. <laughs> yep. That's going to be shuffled up and face down, because like he had said during uh, when we went over components, these actually have effects that go off um, based on when you acquire them or if you know or if you don't save them or or whatever. But the point is that you don't. You know, you, you don't get to see them in plan what's going to happen. Next, you are going to pick your big bad. So, the rule book says you can pick it at random, but, I mean, if you want to pick a certain big bad, you yeah. can. So. Like, maybe you tried one and you didn't win, and you just go back and get yeah. one again. One more time, the a big bad says big bad on it. It has a main card, and then 
the four underneath cards. And the way that you do this is pretty simple. Flip these upside down, shuffle them up, put the main card on top, and put it in the big bad space. Then you are going to pick a scheme card, which can be either at random, or if you want to pick a certain one, you can do that. So, Yan, you could, uh, you know, uh, we kind of like after we've played, unless it's one, again, that's given us trouble or whatever, uh, you might do something like this, drop the scheme, and just put it in its spot. And then you're going to read the scheme card and see any extra setup that needs to be done. So let's see what we got in this example. We we got Hellmouth opening and the scheme is the setup include eight scheme twists. So we go to the scheme twist cards and we count out eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is going to be part of the villain deck which villain decks here. So I'm just going to put those over here for now. And then it goes on to say twist. This is telling you what happens when one of these cards gets drawn. And it's and just as an example, advance the dark twice. If this triggers the big bad's dark ability down here at the bottom, place this scheme twist under the big bad. And then there's a condition when uh, evil wins. And when there are three scheme twists under the big bad, you lose the game and evil wins. So that's that example of that scheme twist. And that's actually, we've done this one before, and it's actually pretty pretty interesting. I think we, what, we lost two or three times trying yeah. to do this one. So, you know what, I think we'll keep this one because it makes the scheme twist pretty interesting. And there's a, there's a, there's a <laughs> feel of desperation yeah. once they start <laughs> yep. going under these cards. So we will go ahead, when we do gameplay, play this scheme for you guys. Okay, and then next is set up the villain deck. So you are going to add five Master Strike cards to the villain deck. So And that's all of them. Yep. So okay, so you take all these, and we're going to put that on top too. And then you're going to add the villain groups to the villain deck. Right. Now, how do you do that? Okay, so part of it is looking on the... The, the big bad card because there's always a set that the big bad leads so that that is always going to be included when you, you play a certain big bad and then this in the first the, that's the villain that we're playing it always leads the first minion and guess what I happened to pick out during the example <laughs> was the um, the first minion. I think there's there might be a few more that I need to uh, pull out. I don't remember. So those would go on there. And At that point, you consult the rule book, which has a table. Right. On Show that else. real quick. Slap that under there, Joe. And I believe it's actually on the back of the right book there. too, on the quick reference. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. So you got two places that you can go to it. So in our case, it's a two-player game. So what do we do, Jim? It says two villain groups and one henchman group. Okay, so it said two villain groups. This is a villain. Yep, so, so that, that counts, counts as, one. as one. So we need another villain group. Uh, what do you want to go with? So we've got uh, Harbingers of Death. We've got Shark, gang or Shark Gangsters, Vampire Initiate, and Hellhounds. What do you like, Jim? Let's go with that first group. Harbingers of Death is yeah. coming out. They All sound right. like they're real friendly. Okay, so that's our henchman group. And if you were listening to Jeb, he said only one of those. Yep. So, so you got, so I have the whole stack of the henchmen. They also go in the bad guy deck. And then and one more villain group. Right. And I actually, I think I did get all of the first ones because I'm looking at yeah. Up here, so we have, and Jeb gets to pick again here, oh boy. we have The Gentleman, which is probably the best episode of Buffy ever. Well, when you saw it like that, I gotta pick it, right? Alright, we'll go with, uh, <laughs> these are villain demons. It's not, that's just the first one that was on top, it's actually multiple episodes, but The, yeah. uh, the Gentleman was, uh, which I've said before while I was talking about this, was from Hush. I and enjoyed that episode. so good. <laughs> So good. All right. So once you have all of that, there's one thing you got to add. 
there are bystanders that also get added into that deck. And when you look at the table, it says for a two-player game that two bystanders get put in. So here are the rest of the bystanders. So like I said, you got a pretty pretty hefty uh, hefty stack of them. You got to give them a quick shuffle here. And Jeb said put two in. Yep. All right. So again, he's consulting the chart. And then I'm going to randomly put in two. And at this point, so just so I don't know which ones they are, because I guess if you played this multiple times, you'd have an idea. Not that it really matters. The, at that point, the villain deck is is ready, and you're just going to shuffle it up. Yep. And I'm only going to give it a quick shuffle on the screen because we'll do this more when we get into uh, actual gameplay. And at this point, I'll also flip it up down, upside down. That is. Um, I will say that during setup, shuffle really it, it, yeah, you because you st you just stacked everything in order. You really, really, really it benefits you to shuffle that thing up really, really good. The the master schemes and the scheme t or master strikes and scheme twists. Yes. If those get clumped, You're, you could just be in trouble because the scheme that we're playing. If you get all of them, then that's pretty much game Well, over. you don't want the same villain even running across the board yeah. either, over and over again. Especially if it's a high one to kill, oh, you'd, yeah, be, yeah. you'd be you'd be out of luck quick. Okay, uh, so, so there you go. Villain deck is done, so now we got to make the hero deck. So there are 15 different heroes, yep. and you're going to pick five of them, either at random or to your liking. And we like Faith, so she is going to be one of the ones that yep. we pick. And why not go with an all-star cast and let's find Buffy. <laughs> That's the next one I was going to say to pick. <laughs> we have Buffy. Uh, what do you think? Xander, Giles, Willow. Who do you like, Jim? Uh, let's throw in a... Cordelia. We should probably throw in the buffoon Xander. Right? All right. <laughs> and... And yes, most of the big names are in here. I think all of them, actually, the, at least the biggest names, because Spike's in here, Angel's in here, Oz is in here. Um, I keep wanting to call him Seth. Well, he is Seth, but that's <laughs> yeah. his real name. Yeah, I know. All right, we need two more, right? Uh, let's throw in an Angel and a... You want to do Cordelia or Willow? Um, I'm partial to Willow. Okay, let's go with Willow. All right, and we have Angel... Because what's a game without a little love interest? And and Willow. Alright, All right, so there's our there's our five our five different heroes. Just after you've selected them, just like the villain deck, these all and this keeps spinning <laughs> around. Stupid card. Uh, and you are going to also shuffle these up, and I'm just gonna give it a just a one-timer because we will either off-screen shuffle these really good or something. Oh, that will. is not how good we're going to shuffle yeah. this deck. Those also get placed face down right in the spot that says, guess what? Hero deck. Yep. And from there, it goes into starting the game, which you would shuffle the villain deck, shuffle the hero deck. Uh, you're going to flip five cards from the hero deck face up into the hero spaces. Which is, I guess, is, is the library. And this isn't just an example, people. We will reshuffle these. There's oh, man. What? I'm happy with that. Someone yeah, that is pretty, that is pretty, <laughs> pretty nice. All right. All right. Then each player is going to shuffle their personal deck and draw six cards. Which is very typical of a deck builder, obviously, because usually you pick half you draw half your deck, and then on your next turn, you're going to draw your other half before you yep. start acquiring cards. So this gets shuffled. At this point, it's face down. Jeb would draw six cards. He'd have a hand of cards. Yep. And then you choose a player to go first, and the players take turn in clockwise order. So Okay. Once that is it for setup. We're going to... Uh, we could just jump into gameplay if you want to, Jeb. Yeah, sure. All right. We're back. Haha, <laughs> how'd you like that? <laughs> very easy to just jump into how this game is played so once setup's done you know, I don't think we really need to arrange anything so yeah um, on your turn what you're going to do is first play the top card of the villain deck all right and then you're going to play cards from your hand and then you discard your hand and draw six new cards so that's the overview of your turn so let's go into specifics so all right so 
as Jeb said, step one, and this is one of the biggest things that you can forget to do, yeah. is <laughs> it's like one of those things, as Jeb always says, do things in order and you won't forget. Um, if, you've, if you've never played a deck builder, you probably won't forget this. If you have played a deck builder and legendary system is new to you, like you will, right? <laughs> you will, you will, you will probably forget to do this. So the first step in this game is to flip the villain deck over. All right, and there's a couple things that can happen. If it's a monster, it it goes into the uh, first sp space. If there's already a monster there, it slides it over and then it fills it in. If there's an example like this, everything doesn't move. This one just moves over and the new card's put here. Alright? So that's kind of how, how, it, how it works. So nothing goes right. Necessary. Only push to the right if necessary. Okay? Uh, a couple other things that can happen, and actually the next card is a good example. I flip the card over, and it's a bystander. What happens with a bystander? Assuming that no other rules tell you what to do with bystanders, the first villain in the or closest to Hellmouth, however you want to, closest to the villain deck is I think how they say it in the rule book, captures the bystander. Just slide it under. That's how that works. Now, question: Since I didn't draw a monster, do I have to keep drawing out of the deck? And the answer is no. That also goes for Master Strikes and Scheme Twists. <laughs> okay. With the the way you shuffled just once, they were all clumped. I was like, you definitely need to shuffle. Right. So. All right. So if I draw a Master Strike, obviously, like let's say that that is exactly how it looks, nothing would go into that spot. But I have to consult what happens uh, when I draw a Master Strike on the big bad. And this one says... Master Strike, destroy the library space closest to the first. KO any hero there. Place this Master Strike there. <clears throat> when there are five Master Strikes in the library, evil wins. Oh, this is bad all the way around. This is going to wow. be a ridiculous um, scenario. So, this is, this is the library, right? This is the, uh, what does it say, closest, destroy the library space closest to the first. So, yes. okay, so basically it's saying, here's closest to the first, right? This gets destroyed, which is a destroyed pile, which is basically up here. And Not that it really matters, yeah. okay? That really, honestly, really doesn't matter. It's just a place to keep cards that are out of the game. And then this Master Strike goes here, and guess what? In this scenario, that spot's taken up now, so we don't we have less uh, ability to to buy things. And we we should probably stress that this is specific to the first. Right. The uh, this is not the like a rule that happens with all the bad guys. It's just the first ability is the uh, destroying and replacing with. The right. Person. Exactly like Jeff said. Because remember. When I picked this card, I went and referenced this. So yep. if you were playing a different game and you didn't have this, or a di if you had a different this, yeah. you would uh, reference something totally different. Again, one of the reasons uh, that keeps this game spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. Okay. So that's what would happen in, in that case. Again, I want to reiterate that no, I don't go back and keep picking until I actually get a monster. That was bad enough. Yeah. And then if I... At some point, pick up a scheme twist. Guess what? I go and I reference the scheme card. See what happens when I pick a scheme twist. Okay, so then you would reference the scheme. And this one says, twist, which is this card. Advance the dark twice. We haven't talked about it yet, but basically it means uh, moving this uh, down. Okay, so when it says advance the dark that means move towards the dark when it says advance the light that means move towards the light so i have to do this twice one two since it started at one and it said if it triggers the big bad's dark ability so if it had been two and i had to move it to 
once it gets to here, triggers the big bad's ability. So this, this can be extra bad. Um, one, it's getting, it either moves it closer to there or it actually triggers it, okay? But then, uh, then I would have to go back here and read the big bad's thing, and then place this twist scheme under the big bad. So that, what that means is I do this, I take this scheme, and I place it under the big bad. Normally this is a, over here is a discard pile for the strikes, but the strikes are actually moving over to there in this game. And then it says if there's ever three of these under the big bad, guess what? We lose. <laughs> so obviously in that game you want to try to keep it from uh, going to the... Uh, if you remember when I read the card it says if this triggers the big bad. So if it doesn't trigger the big bad, this scheme card does not go under the big bad. Okay, so that's how the schemes work. And one more time, that's the only card you draw. You only okay. draw one card. You only ever draw one card. Okay, so uh, let me put this, this back. It was back in the deck there. She's back down there. And All right. One thing we should talk about is the monsters. When you flip them, some of them might have an ambush effect. Yep. And that goes off when you flip them. Okay. So now, now that Jeb's talked about the monster cards, let's just talk about them for a second. Okay. Well, that's a good lead-in. Okay. Um, so the monster card could have uh, a couple different things on it. Uh, the main thing it could have on it is a, a fight. All right. So the keyword fight. That means if you fight this monster, this thing happens, okay? How do you fight a monster? You look down here, that's uh, how many of those symbols that you need to be able to take out that monster. So, if I had four, uh, I think they call them strikes or something like that, um, then I would be able to fight him. If I do fight him, that goes off, etc. Others things that a monster might have are an escape, like this one. So, what escape means, if this is all the way at the end, and it gets pushed off, that means it escaped. So, since it has an escape ability, that would trigger. Another keyword that a villain can have is called ambush. When an ambush comes out, let's see if I can find one real quick. Here we go. Alright, so... For example, if this guy flips over, he has an ambush. So I look at, immediately once I draw this card, it says set the dark to two. So even if this was all the way up at three, his ambush sets it there. Even if it was a three in the dark, it just sets it. To well, two. that's yeah. very true. So. so it sets it to to two. Okay. I think that is all of the keywords that are usually on yep, the villains. Ambush, fight, and escape. Okay. So now you know the certain uh, keywords that can be on the villain cards. So pretty sure you've got most of the monster mechanics, right? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it for the monsters. And then if you defeat a monster that has the innocent person behind them you get him. you get them and the, whatever ability that innocent has yes. triggers immediately um, and that happens how how whenever you acquire a bystander right. no matter like what the method right. um, unless a card tells you that its ability doesn't trigger the other thing to note is that these little numbers here are victory points okay so if if you acquire those because when you beat a bad guy they go off to the side in your play area and you keep them. And then if you guys win, then whoever has the most victory points is basically like the best slayer of the game. But you still all win collectively. Right. It's just you always want to be a little bit better than Jeb. <laughs> it's in every rule book. Yeah, it's pretty much. A little bit better than Jeb. If I was writing rule books, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so... That was just step one was drawing a card at the beginning of your turn from the villain deck. The next step is to play all the cards from your hand and you can either recruit or fight or both or uh, whatever you're able to do. I believe in this game you don't have to play all your cards though. Yeah, yeah, you're correct because there's the discard stuff, right? Right. There are deck builders that force you to play every card right. in your hand. My mistake. It, it, there is a big difference in... 
Yeah, because like some of your hero control. cards, like, there are times when you don't, like, I don't yeah. want that to trigger right now. N now that you've revealed the monster, it's, like, basically the heart of your, your turn. And uh, so there are things that you can do on your turn. All right? It's a deck builder, so obviously you want to buy cards. So here's your hero row. That's basically your marketplace. And so let's see. I have a hand here that Jeb gave me to... I'm going to separate stuff. Ooh. Wow. All right. Okay, so in this case, I have two st stars. I don't remember what they call them. In this, game, but <laughs> this is basically your ability to buy stuff. Yeah. So however many of these have is what you have to be able to purchase with. Recruit points. Recruit Sorry. points. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Very specific. Yes, I just it call is. it money. Yeah, so that's what we all do. Uh, thank you, Dominion. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and then this is what I was talking about with the, the uh, you got a word for that, I was calling them strikes. It just says attack. Okay, they're attacks, alright? So, one, two, I have a four attack value. So look, I actually could fight that guy. Um, and with this hand, that's exactly what I would do. And if I fight this guy, he goes away, I trigger the fight, and that actually says advance the light. So that would go up one. I would get this. Yep, when you defeat a monster, it goes into your, like, victory display for, like, each player has their own. Right. So. And then I would also get, since that had a bystander, I would get that bystander. And then this guy says, reveal the top two cards of your deck, KO one, and uh, discard another. Uh, that could be good, that could be uh, bad, um, because KOing is actually out of the game, so it would go up here. Uh, so... Hopefully I don't draw two really good cards. Hopefully I yeah. get like one of my starter cards so that I can um, call my deck a little bit. And that goes into my victory display too. So in this case, that's pretty much all I can do because if you notice, I have uh, two recruit points and there is nothing on here that's a two. But wait, Mickey, there's more. However... <laughs> This ended up being a pretty good example. <laughs> uh, at any point on your turn, you can use a courage token to either represent a recruit point or an, or one recruit point or one attack. Yep. Okay, so I only have two, but look, there's actually a three on the board. And since we're just starting, I would really, really like to get some cards going into my deck. So I will, as Jeb t uh, pointed out. I'm going to spend this. That gives me one more recruit point, and I will purchase this faith. All right? This goes immediately into my discard pile, and then that would be all I could do at the turn, and I would put these in my discard pile, and that, this, uh, that immediately flips over. Okay, and this is a, uh, this is not a, um, Wait till the end of your turn before you fill. This it, is a when, it, when it's empty, you get to refill it. Okay? All right, so that's buying. And uh, so now that you know how to purchase cards, which was probably pretty simple, let's go over the key parts of a hero card. Okay? So you already know that this is how, this is how many recruit points a hero takes to buy. If it has the attack values when you play the card, that's how many attack value you're generating for the turn. And then some actually have stars. I think our example yep. just has all attack. Yep. But. Um, but there are there are plenty that have a star up here, okay? And that represents recruit points. Yep. So that goes into your pool of re recruit points when you play a card. All right? Now, there are a couple other keys to the cards. Basically, they are like what group do they represent and then what kind of power i'll call it do they represent so for instance this this face here with the the pink um stakes are slayers so that's a slayer uh that's a slayer obviously that's a slayer uh buffy probably has the slayer mark too we can look real quick Let's find a Buffy. Guess what? Oh, Mickey's right. <laughs> Slayer Mark. Okay, so those are Slayers. All right? And then underneath them, do you know what those are called, Jim? 
Which part? Uh, like, not what group. Like, so the S is like Scooby's. Hero type icon. So the, yeah, hero type icons. And the, the, the top one is team icon, and then hero type icon. Okay, so this is the team, and then the hero type is below it. Yeah. So, uh, for instance, what is the, the one that looks like brain waves? Oh, is it like a head with some yeah. lines on it? Instinct. So this is a slayer with the instinct ability or whatever you want to call it, okay? So why is that important? Because some of the cards, as you can see, like on this Xander here, this has a Scooby symbol. So what that means is if at some other point in the game you have already played a Scooby and then you play this card, you get the extra part of the ability. The key to remember with these symbols, because it could be either or, is that um, you don't get what comes after the, the colon unless you've already played another card of that type, which is different to, than yeah. something like Star Realms where it's like, I don't care when you played the card, you get the ability. So it's very important in this particular deck builder to play the cards in a particular order if you want certain things to happen. Yep, order matters. Order matters in this game. So hopefully that made sense because that's pretty much, uh, unless Jeb's got something to throw in, that's pretty much all there is to know about hero cards. So you saw Mickey attack one of the, the, the villains. Mm. Uh, you also have the option to attack the big, big bad. Thanks. And at the bottom of the big bad there is a strike amount, which I believe that's 12 for yep. him. So if you have 12 attack, you're able to attack the big bad. And what happens when you do that is you take the top card of the face down pile underneath it, you flip it over, and then you do whatever the effect says, right. and so, then it goes to your victory display. Right. So remember, you're not really doing anything with this card, okay? So you once you get 12 and you declare that you're um, attacking the big bad. Also important to remember to make sure you know what the big bad and the scheme does because under certain conditions it might not even let you attack him unless other things in the game, yeah. you know, are under control, so to speak. Okay, so when you have, let's pretend that Jeb does have 12 and he's like, I'm, I'm going to hit the big, the big bad. He just, all he does is literally what just happened. He takes... The top card off there read what it does puts it in display so then now there's only three left and the point is to try to get all four of those dead and then the big bad is really dead yep and then i think we should probably mention that the potential slayers are always available to yep. buy they cost like, three always available to buy until and they, it runs out yep and they generate uh two two re recruit points so that can help your buy power uh there is there is, one interesting thing in this game is there's not a generic that boosts your attack. So you're going to have to purchase those from the hero row. Yeah. The initiative soldiers are only a one. So there are a couple uh, a couple ways. Most of the time to get wounds, it's going to happen from card generation. And if you, if you get a, a wound, um, it's going to go into your discard pile. Okay. And... Uh, they, they're worth zero, and no, you can't buy them. So yeah. if you have a card that actually does good stuff with wounds, you can't choose on your turn to since you don't have enough money to buy a wound, okay? So just because they cost zero doesn't mean you can purchase them. Uh, for the most part, they are uh, hand cloggers. You know, when you draw your six cards at the beginning of your turn, or at the yeah. end, at the end of your turn, really. And it can get rough with those because I remember right. some of the ones we were playing. Yeah. It's like if you get filled up, that's um, tough. But it does have a down. At all the wounds have it. It's called healing. Uh, if you don't recruit any heroes or defeat any villains on your turn, you may KO all the wounds from your hand. I, I didn't even know that had an ability. What? I, Jeb can't read cards. <laughs> well, I never read that. I just assumed it was a hand clogger. It is, but you miss a whole turn. Um, you literally can't do anything. I, yeah. I mean... I guess if you're running like with six or more in your it, deck or whatever. Yeah, you, you might know. have to, to, to miss an entire turn and uh, 
hopefully you'll get to see that the game can get pretty hairy. So, yeah. uh, you know, not that not the best option. But if you get, I would say if you end up, unless there's literally nothing else you can do, but if you end up a, with a, a hand of half or more wounds, it's worth taking the heal. Yeah. Um, remember, they get KO'd. I believe that the game says uh, it when wounds get KO'd, they literally go back into the wound pile, not into the not to the out of the game. Um, Jeb can correct me if I'm wrong, even though he doesn't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how wounds uh, by various events. Okay, so again, that's what happens if you have if you get if the game makes you take uh, wound cards. All right, we talked a little bit about the light and dark track. I think you understand if it advances to dark, it goes down no matter where it is. If, if I'm here, advance to dark means move towards the dark. If it says advance the light, move towards the light. What happens when it gets to the top? So if I'm on three and I advance the light, it triggers the top here, which says gain a courage, move to, the, move to light one. So if I'm here and I trigger the light twice, one, Two. I think it's when you're here and you advance it once, it goes boom, it's set to one. If you do it twice, it goes boom, set oh. to one, and then add one. I think Jeb's right, actually. Yeah. So if that happens, then you continue. Yeah. All right. Same down here, except this always triggers the big bad's dark, which <laughs> there is a dark, and then that's what happens. And that's never good. All right. One other thing to talk about is what happens when uh, we're going to back up to the villains a little bit this because of kind of extra. So when it's over here, it gets pushed off the board. We told you it goes into the escaped villain pile. When a villain escapes, there's a couple things that happen. The first thing that happens is it KO, KOs a hero from the library with a cost of six or less. So at least you don't you lose... Your really, really powerful cards. Um, so you'd have to pick one and you put it up in the KO pile. It immediately gets refilled. So that card is not coming back. Uh, the second thing that happens is if it had a bystander with it, the bystander goes bye bye also. But you're a bad Scooby for not saving the bystander. So you have to, or everybody, has to discard a card from their hand, correct? Yeah. Right. So all collectively, whoever's playing the game, everybody has to discard one card from their hand. Finally, the tracker moves one towards the dark whenever a, a villain escapes. And we already told you that if it has escape ability, that triggers too. The everybody discard only happens if it has the bystander with it. Right. I don't I know if think, you said that or not. Uh, I might not have made it clear, but that's... Right. that. I was... Yeah, uh, so like when, yeah. whenever they escape, they're going to KO a card. If they escape with a bystander, then everybody discards, discards their the card, card. And then and they always move always the track. Advance the, advance so, the dark. so the everybody discard a card only happens when you're a bad Scooby. Yep. Okay? Um, and that was the little bit of extra for uh, the monster. And I think... I think that is the majority of, of gameplay, or at least that's a, a good overview. Jeb's pointing at me to say one more thing. We haven't talked about the last step of your turn, which oh, is yeah. after and you... We are talking about a turn, yeah. aren't we? After you do all the stuff on your turn, at the end of your turn, you're going to discard your hand and draw six new cards. So it's pretty much like a normal deck. Yeah. So if you didn't, you don't get to hold any cards, but again, the way that it's worded, you don't have to play all your cards either. Right. So at that point... Dump everything into your discard pile, draw a hand of a new hand of six, and then proceed to the next next player's turn. And if you ever draw a card and your deck's empty, then you reshuffle the discard to make it your deck. Right. Which is a normal deck. Yeah, when it, whenever you need to draw a card and you can't, that's when you um, you shuffle your discard pile. Alright, so how do you win the game, Mickey? I mentioned once that basically you have to kill all the 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 cards underneath uh, the big uh, the big bad, and I believe for some reason if you go through the uh, the entire villain deck, right? Mm -hmm. If you make it through the whole villain deck and you're still 
and the game's still going, you win also, right? Same with the hero deck. If either the villain deck or the hero deck is empty, then you win because uh, you survived the scheme, but you just didn't defeat the big bad. I have no idea how often that happens. I can't imagine much. Yeah. Especially the, the it, villain deck, because yeah. of all the, the things we played. Right. Anything else? No, I think uh, most of the stuff, if you have questions, you can... There's a section in the book with, like, random stuff you can consult, so we won't really go over all of that. Plus, I think if you watch them, maybe, like, watch us play for, like, ten minutes of the gameplay, you'll yeah. get... If, if there's anything that wasn't clear, then you, you, should, you should get it. So, uh, we're going to re... We're going to reset this, shuffle these two decks a little bit better, and uh, we'll be back for a playthrough of Legendary Buffy.